Good afternoon and welcome back to the 2 p.m. session of day four of the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative Summer Sandbox. I'm happy to introduce you to Dr. Shelley Rose from the CSU History Department and co-founder of the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative. And Shelley will be leading a session this afternoon called Getting to Know the CTC Resource Referatory. Well, cool. thank you, Molly. Um, let me share my screen. And while I do that, I um, also want to give a shout out to our Cleveland Teaching Collaborative team member, Kalita O'Brien, who is here. She's our graduate assistant and a master's student in the Department of History. And the referatory would not be at a thousand entries without Kalita. So quick shout out to Kalita. <laughs> um, she is metadata extraordinaire. So Today, we're just going to take a few minutes to take a tour of our resource referatory. Um, there are a couple ways that you can get there. So I have my browser pulled up, which hopefully everyone can see. Can you give me a quick thumbs up that I have the awesome? Thank you. So one way is to just go to our collaborative home page, essentially our blog. Um, and one of the tabs on our cleteaching.org blog page is the resource referatory. And this will bring you out to the site where we have all of our resources. The, just to, speaking to the technical aspects, our blog is housed on WordPress and the referatory is built in Omeka. And the brief history of that is when we started the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative, I'll pull that up again, in May of 2020 last year, um, we started posting case study essays from our collaborators. And in these case study essays, if you click on one of those, it talks about digital tools and technologies used, and we have them sorted in the tags in the WordPress site. We started a page on WordPress to have our all these resources in like a bibliography, and it quickly grew too big for WordPress. It was unwieldy, it was unsearchable, it became not a great format for, for all of the resources. And so we used a referatory format um, framework that actually I built with the Center for Public History and Digital Humanities in the History Department um, for a class. <laughs> and we took that referatory framework and plunked it down and created a referatory for the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative. And referatory is actually a library word, um, a library information science word that our performing arts and humanities librarian Mandy Goodset introduced me to. And it simply means that we have a site here where we've organized data, metadata really, for each resource and refer out to the resources that others have created. And so there's no content housed directly on the referatory to date. It all refers out to other people's content. Although all of the sandbox recordings and um, slides will either be referred out to from here or uploaded directly to our referatory after this session. So from the referatory homepage, you can do a few things. If you look at our menu, it's a nice outline of what the referatory actually has. Omeka organizes things by items, collections, and we call the next level of curation showcases. And so you can browse by any of those levels. We also have that on the homepage. So you can see there's our latest resources, resource so showcases, which are curated content. Um, they're a little bit more um, detailed collections of resources. They're there to help us as collaborators to kind of see resources in context and to give them um, a little more information. For instance, for the History Podcast Showcase, you can see it has links out to our resources, but it also, this one is authored by Kalita. Um, it organizes them by podcasting in the classroom, you know, podcasts for educators, podcasts for students. It helps add another level of discovery for you, for collaborators. And then the other organizational feature is collections. And so collections are simply what they sound like. They're simple collections of our resources. This one is one we've started for this week's activities and recordings and sessions. It has all of the links and resources we've added from that our presenters have mentioned in the past week. And so they're all here organized into one collection. On the resource level, here we can try Jamboard. Um, every resource has its own page. There's a screenshot to show you what you might land on if you were to click on it. Um, 
And there's a button that takes you, refers you out to the actual resource. Also at the top, you can see um, our resources all have a description or an abstract. A lot of times for this referatory, those abstracts are taken directly from the resource itself. If there's a description or a project description, um, we try to use that whenever possible. Sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes there isn't a description. We have a lot of crowdsourced documents um, and things like that in the referatory. And then our team um, creates an abstract and adds that to our referatory so you know what you're looking at. And you'll also see in the top here the author or creator of the resource and if it's a part of any of our collections. And if you want to see more in that collection, you can see this is a hyperlink in the referatory. And if you scroll down, we also have um, tags for different types of information regarding the resources. This summer, we're in a big overhaul of our tag and metadata system. So this may look a little different if you're viewing this post August, 2021. Um, but for now, this is where they are. And also down here, this is um, metadata. This is data about the resources, data about data. <laughs> um, and it includes the basic information that we need for cataloging the resources, the title, the creator, um, the date we entered it into the referatory, which is what the date is, um, the contributor, here's Kalita, she contributed the resources, she created the metadata, um, what language is the resource, the abstract again, and the URL, because most of our resources are born digital resources. And you can browse that way. You can click on tags to find other things if you want pre-kindergarten through 12 resources, that tag will bring up our resources that we have tagged as useful for um, pre-kindergarten through 12 um, educators. Um, there are also other ways to browse. You can get a full tag list and click on tags that way. You can see some of them really stand out. Like if you click on the one at Cleveland State University, you get all of the resources that have been created by either um, faculty or instructors at Cleveland State University, you know, that have been sponsored or partnered with at Cleveland State. And so you can see things organized that way. Um, whenever you wanna go back home, you can click our logo. And you can also browse the resources um, simply by clicking on the browse resources button. You get all the resources in the order that they have most recent, the most recent resources that have been entered into the referatory. Um, currently, we have, you can see, 1,050 resources publicly available. Um, this is an amazing number. <laughs> we did not expect to have so many. We've, the project is less, or actually just over a year old now. Um, and this is just um, a testament to how much content has been created in the past year or been, um, you know, awareness has been raised about them in the past year due to emergency remote learning and all of our experiences as educators through the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and so this is an unwieldy number too, <laughs> now that we've gotten to this in the, in the database in the referatory. And so one of the things you can do to make this less um, daunting, you can search or sort the information by title. So you can get an alphabetical list. Um, we have a lot of hashtag um, entries. So hashtags come up first. Um, you can look by creator, alphabetically by creator. Um, and so you can see here we have that list. You can also um, search the resources. So we can go to, you can enter a search term here, or if you go to the advanced search, you can do a full site search. So you can get showcase results and item results, resource results, or just the resource search, which only um, searches our individual resources. Um, when you do that, it sounds, it looks a lot like um, a normal library catalog search. So for keywords, we could search for, we just had a nice presentation on storytelling by Molly. So let's add storytelling for a keyword. And you can see, it tells you how many resources we have on storytelling. And then you can see 22 resources. Some of them are apps that help with such an activity. Um, some of them are syllabi. We have Dr. Buckley Marutis's syllabi, syllabus here about digital story resources um, and assignments. 
We have um, articles. If there's a, a scholarly article or something that we have, um, you know, published and born digital that we can refer to, we put it here as well. Um, and you can see how there's just so many different things here. If you are really focused on storytelling and you want apps for storytelling, you can do Boolean searches. Um, I think we have it as application. And now you can see here, this, these all focus on different applications. So YouTube unlisted video instructions. So how do you do that? iMovie, Lightworks, some of these things associated with digital storytelling. And we're down from 22 to 17 that are tagged with some kind of application. So also another way we have tried to pare down the number of results or help focus collaborators' attention on certain things. The collections are the next level. If you click on that, we've already showed you, but um, for instance, events are curated into one collection and you can see the, if you're looking for events, conferences, things like that, they are curated into a single collection. But the highest level of curation are, is um, our showcase level of curation, which here we can browse all showcases. And this is where we've actually curated content. So um, we have History Podcast by Kalita, which I showed you. We had a partnership with the Right to Vote at CSU um, program for the, the um, anniversaries of the 15th and 19th Amendments this past year. And so you can see this is a curated collection of resources from the referatory um, that had that in mind. So they're organized by a specific theme. There's a lot more author input on the showcases in an effort to really, to really help us you know, process the thousand entries in the referatory. And if you're doing digital storytelling, they're like individual toolkits for educators to use as they plan their courses. And finally, one feature of the referatory is actually that it's meant to be a crowdsourced resource. And we have the contribute a resource page. And so if you wanted, if you there was a resource not already in our referatory that you would like to add, you can do so. You can select CTC resource under contribute a resource, and then you would give the full title. We'll just test um, the primary author or director, this is the creator. We'll just put CTC team, the date we entered the metadata, and that you can see there are also instructions to help with metadata entry. Um, so that's today. Um, what is today? There we go. I'm the one creating this. Make sure you enter your name the way you want it to appear consistently. So when I publish an academic article, this is how I publish my name. So in the, in the referatory database, I enter it the same way. If I were to enter it without my middle initial, it would be a different um, link in the referatory, right? It wouldn't come up as me every time people would have to look for both my names. So be consistent if you can. Um, some of these are drop down menus because we have a controlled vocabulary. And so English is a controlled um, symbol. So we have that. We can add our abstract. And then where was this created? We'll just put Cleveland State University and the URL, we'll just add our CLE teaching URL for, um, for argument's sake. You can upload a file, every resource has a screenshot. So if you wanna take the screenshot and make sure that the one you want is the one we use, um, you can upload a screenshot. We require the email address because if we have questions, we wanna be able to find you and ask you. Um, and then you have to tell us that you're not a robot. So see if I can pass this quiz on the fly. And then if you want to keep your identity private as a contributor, we would do that in the referatory. We would mark it as a crowdsource contribution, but not with your name. We have a terms and conditions that um, basically say that your content is not our content. We're just referring out to it, um, but you should read that to make sure that um, you understand all of the conditions of our database and then you can contribute. 
And what happens then is this gets sent to us into our Omeka dashboard. One of the team members will review it before it goes public and we will add it to the referatory or we will also check to make sure we don't already have it. And if there's new metadata that we can add to our existing entry, we can do that too and edit it. So feel free to contribute to the referatory. We hope that you will come and visit the referatory um, and use this abundance of resources that we've gathered that we can expect to continue to have resources um, being published in the next year and for as long as the project sustains itself. Um, I think Kalita has at least 100 in the queue. So we are um, <laughs> check back often for our new submissions and thank you for getting to know the resource referatory.